All right, builders, let's break down this MCP thing. Model Context Protocol. You've probably seen the buzz, maybe on Twitter, maybe in your dev circles. Everyone's calling it the next big thing. Like, literally the future of how LLMs talk to, well, you know, everything. Your databases, your apps, your code, even your crazy prompt chains. Think about it. Remember when USB-C dropped? Suddenly, one cable to rule them all. Charging your laptop, your phone, headphones, connecting displays. Total game changer, right? That's the vibe MCP is going for, but for AI. It wants to be the universal connector. Okay, so we're going to cover three things. First thing is, what is MCP? And why should you, especially if you're coding, even care? Second is the origin story. How did this become a thing? What's the pain point it's solving? And the last thing is real world action. We'll jump into windsurf and cursor, solid AI dev tools, and actually hook something up using an MCP. Sounds good? All right, so let's dive in. First is, what actually is MCP? So MCP is equal to Model Context Protocol. A super simple idea, but with crazy implications. Think of it as a standardized plug and play system for all AI models. GPT-4, Claude, Mistral, whatever. Whatever hot new model drops next week. And the reason that these are so important is so that it connects with different data sources, different tools, APIs, you name it. But why now? Let's map the evolution. So it kind of went through phases, right? So now let's talk about phase one, just LLMs. This was the start. ChatGPT, Claude, etc. Explode onto the scene, insanely cool tech, but let's be real. At their core, they're just predicting the next word based on massive training data. On their own, they're kind of dumb. They hallucinate and do some stupid shit. Now, let's move on to phase two. LLMs plus context. This is the billion dollar step. Things got way more interesting here. Companies realized LLMs plus external stuff is equal to value. For example, perplexity LLM plus web search, boom. Let's talk about Cursor. It's an LLM plus your actual code base, whether it's reading or writing, and this has insane productivity boosts. Let's look at your Gemini tools, which is an LLM plus your Google workspace, which is your emails, your docs, or your sheets. And suddenly, it's useful for your daily tasks. These aren't just chatbots anymore. They're integrated tools, and that's why they hit those crazy valuations. They solve the context problem, and that means no more manually spoon-feeding data from 10 different tabs. And we all know AI is only as good as the context that you give it. Now let's move on to the third phase, which is your MCP, fixing the integration mess. So right now it seems like LLMs plus tools equals problem solved, right? Almost. What's the issue? Scaling this integration is a nightmare. It's a classic N into M problem. You have N AI apps trying to talk to M different tools, databases, APIs, and every connection is custom. Connect to Postgres, custom code, specific authentication. Connect to Slack, different API, different framework, different authentication. So even if you want to connect your local file system, you have to take another approach. It becomes a combinatorial explosion for developers, and that is absolute chaos to maintain. Sure, we had APIs, webhooks, random frameworks, but it was like having a drawer full of different charger cables for every single device. Fragmented mess. So MCP steps in and says, Hold up, let's just make one standard protocol like USB-C, which is one way for any AI to get any context that it needs using a defined set of rules. Okay, so let's break that down. Let's look at the model, any AI model, GPT-4, Claude 3, Gemini, future GPT-5, text, image, video models, it doesn't matter. Now let's look at the context, the stuff the model needs to be useful, code from your repo, data from your database, or info from Slack, files from your disk, function calls, basically anything that makes the AI smarter for your specific task. A protocol is the standardized rulebook, the common language, how the model asks and receives information, how the model asks and receives context. It's not a tool itself, it's the standard everyone agrees to use. Think HTTP for the web. With MCP, your AI can discover and use data sources, local or remote, without you building a million fragile custom integrations, which is huge. Now we're gonna talk about the MCP architecture. Okay, you get the what and the why. Now, how does it actually work under the hood? Super high level, right? Stay with me. MCP client. This is your AI application or agent. Think of it as the brain, the thing that needs data or needs to do something. It's running inside Claude Desktop, Cursor, Windsurf, or your custom AI app. It initiates the requests. Now we move on to the MCP server. This is a lightweight helper program and this part knows how to talk to a specific thing using the MCP standard. 
got a local database, run an MCP server that speaks SQL to that database. Want Slack integration? Run an MCP server that talks to the Slack API. If you need access to local files, an MCP server can handle that. Next, we're talking about the data sources and the services. This is the actual stuff that the server connects to. And these are of two types, local and remote. So let's talk about local first. This includes stuff like your files, databases on your machine, personal APIs that are running locally. And when we're looking at the remote aspect of things, this can be anything on the internet, whether it's Slack, Gmail, Stripe, Notion, GitHub APIs, cloud databases. So they all communicate using the MCP protocol. The client finds a server that advertises, let's say, GitHub capabilities. The client then tells the server, yo, using MCP rules, create a new repo called Awesome Project. And then the server goes, I got you fam, and interacts with the GitHub API and reports back. All right, so it's enough time for theory. Now we're gonna jump into it. So let's start by opening up Winsoft and then setting up an empty project in a new folder. All right, so once you're in, the next step is to go to Winsoft settings, which is down right here, and click on the advanced settings option. So in here, you'll see cascade. And under that, you'll see MCP. So go there and see if it has written add server. Okay, so once you find the add server, click on that. And now you'll see a bunch of templates. So for the scope of this video, let's add GitHub mainly for two reasons. All right, the first one is we're seeing that GitHub is becoming a nightmare for non-technical folks. So secondly, it's super, super useful for white coders who are not technical and still want version control to host using Vercel, Netlify, etc. So now the setup is relatively simple, okay? So first, what you need to do is create a GitHub account. So for that, we're gonna go to github.com, click on the sign up button. Okay, this process is super easy, it takes about a minute. After you sign up, you'll be redirected to the home page. But as you know, we need to give access to this account to Windsurf. So there must be some sort of linkage going on. So for that linkage, there's something known as personal access tokens. You need to scroll all the way down and find developer settings. Once you click on that and then click on personal access tokens, now you're gonna find these fine grade tokens. The reason we chose that is it lets us control how much access MCP has when we add it in Windsurf. So all of that is under your control. And in order to get control of that, you need to do this. So now let's click on fine grained tokens and generate a new token. We're going to name it MCP Surf and set the expiration date to this. You can set it to whatever you want. We're going to put it one week from now and scroll down. So I'm going to select all the repositories and then we need to select the specific permissions. So this is actually very detailed and you can really spend time thinking, okay, what do I want Windsurf to have access to? But to keep it simple, just follow what we're doing, okay? Administration, read and write. Commit statuses, read and write. Content, read and write. And issues, read and write. Then after you finish that, scroll all the way down and click on generate token. Again, you can set any permissions you want. Now just click on add server. So once you click on add server, it's going to ask you for personal access token. Remember, this is what we made while making the new account. So take that same access token and put that in over here. This will take a few seconds to connect. That's going to take a couple of seconds to connect. And once it's connected, you can create, update files, search repositories, create repositories, blah, 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 all of that stuff. It's pretty impressive, right? So now let's test it out by creating a new GitHub repo. Okay. So let's simply ask to make a new repo named Builders Central. And see our account is new and doesn't have any repos at all. Okay. Okay, I got one here. So let's see if this works. Similarly, we have Postgres, we have Stripe, Slack, and many more templates over here. And not just here, you can add hundreds of templates online on sites like Composio, which is like an app store for MCP, Klein, etc. How MCP changes the game for Vibe coding. I mean, look at this. We just set up a GitHub integration without writing a single line of integration code. We just talk to the AI in plain English. That's the dream of Vibe coding, right? Tell the AI what you want and it handles all of the grunt work. The problem was that Vibe coding breaks down the moment you need a new tool or data source that AI doesn't know about. You'd obviously hit a wall needing real coding or some hacky workaround. MCP makes Vibe coding way more powerful and realistic. You need to orchestrate a workflow across GitHub, Slack, and maybe Stripe, 
Connect the respective MCP servers. You just need to focus on the what, not the how of the connections. This isn't just for vibe coders though. Even for experienced developers, this standard potentially simplifies managing tons of integrations, making systems less brittle and easier to scale. But for those of us leveraging AI to build faster, maybe without deep traditional coding skills, MCP is potentially insane. It unlocks the next level of AI orchestration. The more people build and adopt MCP, the faster we get the universal standard. If you're like us and excited about AI doing more than just generating text or code and actually orchestrating tasks across your entire digital life, MCP is something to watch closely. Let me know in the comments, are you hyped for MCP? All right, so that's the download on MCP from us here at Builder Central. And until next time, keep building.